Welcome to all of you in this video. In this video, we will talk about the human digestive system. Before we talk about all the procedures and process, let me give you a short introduction of all the organs which are involved in this digestive process. Now, actually it is the alimentary canal which plays a very important role on which the whole digestive system is supported. Now, this alimentary canal is a kind of pipe which starts from your mouth and ends at your anus. This whole pipeline is called the alimentary canal. Now, we have different names for the different parts of the alimentary canal. Okay, like when uh, the first part, okay, the first part of the alimentary canal is called the pharynx. Later on, it gets divided in two parts. One part goes to the lungs, which is called the trachea. This one is the trachea. And the second part which goes to the stomach is called esophagus that one is esophagus now the curved part in the esophagus is known as stomach the stomach is separated from the esophagus by a sphincter by an obstacle that obstacle or sphincter is called lower esophageal sphincter now this curved part stomach ends and another curved part start which looks like a C in shape this is called duodenum and this duodenum is separated by the stomach by another sphincter which is called lower uh, sorry pyloric sphincter now see after the stomach including the duodenum there are there are intestines now the intestine can be divided in two major categories one is called the small intestine another is called the large intestine now when we talk about the small intestine, the small intestine itself can be divided in three parts. The first curved part which looks like a she is called duodenum. The second part where most of the absorption takes place is called the jejunum. The last part is called the ileum. Now where the ileum ends, there starts the large intestine. Now in case of large intestine, we can also classify it in three parts. The first one is called the cecum, the second one is called the colon, the third one is called the rectum. Now the colon itself can be divided in three distinct parts. This one, this area which you are seeing here, this is called the ascending colon, this is called the transverse colon and this one is called the descending colon. Now the colon ends and the rectum starts and at the end of the rectum there is a hole through which we expel all the undigested food this is called the anus now let's see how the process of digestion takes place now the process of digestion starts when we take a morsel of food in our mouth now what is mouth mouth is the anterior opening of the alimentary canal now mouth leads to a cavity that cavity is called the oral cavity or the buccal cavity now the oral cavity or the buccal cavity contains a number of teeth and a muscular tongue now when you talk about teeth each tooth is embedded in the socket of jaw bones you know when i say embedded you know teeth is like a screw and it is embedded in the socket of the jaw bone okay so this kind of dentition is called thicodont dentition now, majority of mammals including the human beings form two sets of teeth in their life cycle. Okay. The first set is called the milk teeth or temporary teeth or deciduous teeth. This teeth is replaced by a set of permanent teeth. Now, this kind of dentition where two sets of teeth are formed is called diffiodont dentition. Now, we know that an adult human has 32 teeth and all these 32 teeth are of four types okay which are called the incisors the first two then the canines which are the longer ones and there are premolars which are used for grinding and there are molars which are found in the back and they are also used for grinding okay so because there are four types of teeth in our mouth this kind of dentition is called heterodont dentition so we can say human beings are such organisms which have thicodont diffiodont and heterodont kind of dentition now 
what happens food is broken chewed and torn by the teeth this whole process is called mastication during this process of mastication saliva is released now saliva is released from the salivary glands generally there are three prominent salivary glands in our mouth the first one is called parotid gland now second one is called the submaxillary gland or submandibular gland the third one is called sublingual gland when i talk about that parotid gland parotid gland are the largest salivary glands in human beings they are located on the sides of face just below and in front of the ears okay they are also called stems and duct when you talk about submaxillary or submandibular glands they are located on the angles of the lower jaw just see this is my jaw and this is the angle so here the submaxillary or submandibular glands are located so submaxillary or submandibular glands are located on or at the angles of the lower jaw and they are also called wharton's duct now the third one sublingual gland okay as the name suggests sublingual okay it means it is located under the tree under the tongue and these are also called ducts of rivinus now what happens after the process of mastication when saliva is mixed in the uh, what should i say the food okay here it becomes uh, a small ball like structure which is called bolus now see one more thing is there when we talk about mastication when saliva is released you know 30% of starch is hydrolyzed here with the help of salivary salivary amylase which is present in the saliva okay and after that when the food becomes bolus it travels down this alimentary canal and it is pushed into the pharynx by the tongue now here at pharynx the alimentary canal gets divided in two parts okay i had also mentioned this earlier the trachea and the esophagus here a structure of a structure which is called epiglottis is found now i must inform you that epiglottis is a cartilaginous structure what happens whenever we eat something it just covers the trachea and pushes the food into the esophagus now the movement of the food or the bolus into the esophagus occurs due to its wave like contraction movement now this wave like contraction movement is called the movement of peristalsis now because of the movement of peristalsis the food or the bolus travels down the esophagus and a sphincter which is called the lower esophageal sphincter relaxes now when the lower esophageal sphincter relaxes the food enters into the stomach now here i must say that stomach is the center of all the digestive system and it has three major parts okay the first part where the esophagus opens is called the cardiac region so this region is called the cardiac region okay this curved region is called the fundic region and where it opens into duodenum is called the pyloric region and the stomach is itself located in the upper left portion of the abdominal cavity see this is the abdominal cavity here the stomach is located on the upper left portion so here there is the stomach and there are three major parts of the stomach the first part is called the cardiac region the curved part is called the fundic region and the last part is called the pyloric region now here when the food reaches here or the bolus reaches here the mucosa of the stomach has gastric glands now the question arises what is mucosa okay now see when we talk about alimentary canal in a, the wall of alimentary canal has been divided in four layers the outermost layer is called serosa just imagine a pipe okay the outermost layer of the pipe is called serosa the second last layer or the second outer layer is called muscularis and after that the next layer is called submucosa and the innermost layer is called mucosa now the mucosa of the stomach contains the gastric glands and all these gastric glands are made of three types of cells 
the first cell is called the mucus neck cell which secrete mucus the second cell is called chief cell or peptic cell which secrete proenzyme pepsinogen and the third one is called auxentic or parietal cell which secrete hcl and other intrinsic factor which are essential for the absorption of vitamin b12 now what happens here here the food uh, after after completing all this process you know the food is properly mixed with all the gastric juices because of the churning movement of the stomach after this what happens here the proenzyme pepsinogen when it is exposed to hcl it gets converted into an active enzyme which is called pepsin now what does the pepsin do the pepsin converts all the protein into proteases or peptones which we can say are you know lesser complicated types of proteins or lesser complicated structures of protein so here the proenzyme pepsinogen which is secreted by the peptic or chief cells when it comes in contact with hcl which are secreted by the auxentic cells you know it gets converted into an active enzyme which is called pepsin and this pepsin converts the protein into proteases and peptones now there are two more things the mucus and carbonates which are present in these uh, gastric juices now what does they do okay so the mucus and the carbonates they play an important role in, in lubrication and protection of the mucosal epithelium from excoriation by hcl after all these process the food or the bolus which is now called chyme exits the stomach through the pyloric sphincter and enters into a c shaped part of small intestine which is called the duodenum now here the chyme is mixed with the bile juice the pancreatic juice and now it is called chyle all these two juices the bile juice the pancreatic juice and some secretions from the bruner's gland all these are mixed with the food which are which is called chyme and make it chyle now what is the difference between chyme and chyle chyme was earlier acidic because it was mixed with hcl but the chyle is now uh, acidic it is now alkaline because it has been mixed with the juices which are alkaline in nature so bruner's gland secretion the bile juice and the pancreatic juice all these are alkaline juices they make the chyme chyle which is alkaline in nature at the same time when the chyme enters into the duodenum okay it uh, the hcl which is present in the chyme it stimulates the mucus membrane to secrete some enzymes okay and these are the six enzymes which are secreted by the mucus membrane the first one is called hepatocrinin the second one is called cholecystokinin and the third one is called secretin the fourth one is called pancreozymin the fifth one is called enterogastron and the last one is called enterocrinin now here we will see what are the functions of these enzymes so let's talk about hepatocrinin first okay so hepatocrinin is an enzyme which stimulates the liver to secrete bile juice and the next one cholecystokinin stimulates the bile duct to contract in this way the bile juice which is produced by the liver and which is stored in the gallbladder is secreted through the hepatopancreatic duct into the duodenum similarly the secretin which is the next enzyme what it does okay so secretin stimulates the pancreas to produce pancreatic juice the pancreozymin stimulates the secretion of pancreatic juice into the duodenum and there is another thing which is called enterogastron so this enzyme inhibits all kind of gastric secretion in the duodenum now this is very very important because if you are eating something and the gastric juices are secreted they are released then it is good but if you are not eating anything it might be harmful for you so that is why the inhibiting tendency of enterogastron comes into play 
and the last one is called enterocrinin. Now, enterocrinin is kind of enzyme which stimulates the food into duodenum. So, see here the pancreas produces the pancreatic juice which is secreted by the pancreatic duct and here bile juice is produced by liver it is stored into gallbladder and through the bile duct it is also secreted in the duodenum now here there is a position where this pancreatic duct and the bile duct join each other this specific place is called hepatopancreatic duct now see in this video this is it more videos will follow so till then stay home stay safe thank you